Hello friends. I recently was able to achieve a lifelong dream of being able to drive a supercar on the Autobahn. Using this video, I hope you can too. Growing up here in Miami, uh, you kind of see supercars all the time. You know, I was, me and my friends were super obsessed with them. Um, you know, we would see Porsches, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, you name it. You see it here on the road regularly. Um, but in all that time dreaming about it, I never thought I would actually be able to drive one. Uh, you know, let alone even like just riding in one would have been incredible. Uh, but that's what made it so special this last December where I was able to actually fly over to Germany and actually make this dream come true. And so because it was so special and I thought it was so great, I thought I would just make this video to say exactly how I was able to do it uh, and, you know, some tips and tricks along the way, uh, how you can do it for as cheap as possible. And then uh, hopefully you all can be able to do the same thing and I would love to hear all about it. So first things first, in order to be able to drive a car on the Autobahn, you have to get to Germany. So not always the easiest thing to do. Uh, essentially, you know, traveling to Europe can be pretty expensive, uh, especially depending on the time of year. You're going to be costing at least, you know, four or five hundred dollars plus, um, more realistically, upwards in the thousands of dollars uh, range, especially if you're going to try to fly business. So the first trick, uh, well, I highly recommend for basically any sort of travel is to use miles. Uh, miles, if used responsibly, are an incredibly cheap way to travel. Um, I'll probably make a full video at some point about how to do this, but in a nutshell, um, credit cards offer these sign-up bonuses. Typically, they can be around 50,000 miles for signing up for a new card, and then you have to spend a certain amount, normally about $3,000 in the course of three months, uh, and then you go ahead and get the miles. But here's a good trick is basically most of these cards, you know, have their standard amount, which is like 50,000, maybe 25,000. But every so often, keep an eye out and they'll double this. So you can actually get 100,000 miles for doing the same exact thing. And let me tell you, 100,000 miles can go a really long way. Um, for example, I actually was able to do this trip uh, for uh, in business class on United for uh, less than 100,000 miles. Uh, so a real good trick is basically look at um, not only multiple airlines, but look at multiple destinations. Uh, in fact, I actually didn't fly to Germany on this trip. I actually flew into Zurich in Switzerland because it was a much better value in terms of the miles. So that's step one. You can fly into any city in Europe within reason you want to be as close to Germany as possible um, because of one amazing thing that they have over there, and that's trains. Uh, of course, we know what trains are in the US, but I think most Americans don't realize how amazing the trains are over in Europe. The trains over there are absolutely incredible. They're modern, they're fast, uh, and best of all, they are cheap. You can usually get uh, international, you know, from say Switzerland to Germany uh, tickets one way for as low as 40 euros, you know, which is just over probably about $45. Can't beat it. Um, additionally, though, one thing you do want to be always cognizant of these days is COVID. Um, the restrictions are always changing depending on what country you're going to. So you just really want to make sure you check uh, either the State Department website or more importantly, the local country's uh, COVID restrictions to see what kind of tests that they need. Um, it can make a huge difference and also what time period that you need to get the test in. Um, so for example, if a country only needs an antigen test to uh, get in, usually you can get those pretty cheap and they take about 15 minutes but some countries may require a PCR test, um, you know, and if that has to be done within one day of travel, uh, you could pay probably a couple hundred dollars uh, to be able to get it back that fast. So definitely something to keep an eye on these days, uh, unfortunately. One good thing is actually recently the U.S. just lifted the requirement uh, to have a test before you come back to the U.S., so at least you can save money that way. Oftentimes, COVID tests in another country are quite expensive. Um, could be a couple hundred dollars even. So uh, at least you won't have to do that on the way back. But again, things change. Maybe you will again, but thankfully not right now. 
Okay, so why Munich? Munich is a cool town. Uh, a lot of history, obviously famous for Oktoberfest, but there's a very practical reasons why you may want to actually go there. Uh, the number one thing being is the Autobahns. Um, so Autobahn basically is just highway, uh, the highway system in Germany. Uh, you know, to us, it's like this mythical thing. Uh, I'll, I'll break down some of those myths in a minute here. But uh, one thing that is important is, although there are large sections that do not have uh, a speed limit, essentially, uh, there are it's still just their regular roads, right? So there's going to be traffic, especially around bigger cities. Uh, Munich is kind of a smaller town, and one of the best things about it is it actually has two autobahns that have relatively little traffic, especially compared to, say, in Berlin. Uh, these are going to be the A95 and the A96. Uh, so those are the two routes I definitely recommend uh, that you take. And where are you going to go? Um, well, there's actually a really perfect place to go. It's called Neuschwanstein Castle. Uh, it's actually the uh, inspiration that Walt Disney uh, used for Cinderella's Castle and the theme parks. Uh, spoiler, it's actually a lot nicer than the one that you'll see in uh, Anaheim or in Orlando. Um, but uh, what's really great about it, uh, not only is it very scenic uh, right in the Alps, uh, but uh, there's another really good reason I'll, I'll get to in just one second here. Okay, so now you've arrived in Europe, you still need to get to Munich, uh, you're taking the train, you're probably gonna wind up taking the train to the main station, uh, the HBF or the Hauptbahnhof. You're in the central station. Basically, one other thing that you need is the Munich card. Uh, it is basically an all-inclusive travel card. Uh, allows you to use the buses, the trains, 100% worth it. I think it's only something like $30 uh, per day to use. Uh, well worth it to be able to get around if you're going to be spending any sort of time in the city. Uh, and then especially if you're going to want to go ahead and take the train over to where you're going to go get your car. Next step, how do you get a Porsche? <laughs> Good question, me. Uh, basically, um, so when I was trying to determine what kind of car I was going to get uh, to drive on the Autobahn, uh, you know, I started looking at various rental car agencies like Hertz or Sixth, um, you know, and while they had some nice options, I think like the top of the line was a BMW M8, uh, which was going to be pretty costly per day, um, but probably not exactly the kind of car I was looking for. I really wanted a sports car, uh, which my friend then recommended, you know, he was like, well, you're going to Germany. Why don't you get a Porsche? And I'm like, well, that sounds great. Um, and so I started looking into it and Porsche themselves actually has a wonderful program called the Porsche Drive Rental Program. Uh, and what it does is allow you to rent a Porsche directly from them, uh, from the company itself. So I looked up what the local Porsche dealership was in Munich. It's actually called the Porsche Zentrum Olympia Park. Uh, and that's because it's actually by the Olympic Stadium from when they had the Olympics there back in 1972. Um, this is kind of an ideal location because you can actually take uh, just uh, two trains uh, from the main station, uh, get off uh, from the main station at uh, Oberweissenfeld station, and you're literally within feet of the dealership, uh, which is really incredible. Um, so I went pretty early in the day. I think I got there probably about uh, 12 or 1 o'clock. Um, because I didn't know how long it was going to take to actually do the rental. They were pretty efficient, uh, kind of a trait that the Germans are known for. Um, and one of the other things was they were super nice. Uh, you know, I, I think here in Miami, uh, if you were to try to go to a dealership, they're probably not going to be that nice to you. But over there, they were actually very, very kind. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that's what I did. I actually rented a, a 911. So it's the Porsche Drive rental program. And it was actually kind of reasonable. Um, it was 399 euros per day, which is about $420. Um, uh, but the real limitation there is the fact that you only get 300 kilometers uh, in that time period. So back to why I was saying Neuschwanstein Castle was a great place to go to. 
uh, it's because it's approximately 141 kilometers one way uh, from Munich. So with that 300, uh, if you're careful with using up your kilometers, it's perfect. You can drive down to the castle, uh, come back, and you'll still be within the mileage or the kilometer uh, restrictions. And uh, why is that important? Because if you do go over the 300 kilometer uh, limit, they are going to start charging you one euro per kilometer. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with that conversion, but a kilometer isn't very far. So you could uh, run up some pretty large extra bills on there uh, at the end of your under the end of your trip if you if you did go over. So try not to go over. Uh, speaking of not going over, one of the best ways to, to, to limit your kilometers is to stay close by to where that uh, dealership is. So what I did was I actually looked up what the closest hotels were, and there's one called the Royal Leonardo uh, Hotel there in Munich. It's actually a really nice hotel, uh, four stars, but actually you can get a room there for as low as $83 a night. Um, so uh, ideal because it is probably about half a kilometer from the dealership. You're not really gonna be using any uh, kilometers tra traveling to your hotel and back. So that's just real perfect. And in fact, essentially once you uh, rent the car, uh, you're gonna basically just head out into the main road. Uh, you can either try to do a U-turn or if not, you can just make a right, do a, uh, turn around and then make a left and you're basically gonna be right back at the hotel. Uh, super easy. Uh, one other uh, tip, um, the garage looks a little tight uh, at the hotel. So you wanna go uh, maybe when there's some of the spaces in front of the hotel that are open. Um, you know, you are driving a supercar, you wanna avoid those dents and dings uh, in, a, in a narrow garage. Uh, so yeah, if you can get the street parking out front of the hotel, that's perfect. Uh, as you can see here, I was lucky enough to, to be able to do that. The hotel itself, um, super modern. Uh, the staff is very nice. Uh, the rooms were clean. Uh, there's a little bit of a nice view out of the front uh, that you can see the Olympic Park. Um, but for the most part, it served its purpose well. Um, you can see here, this is a little bit of a video of the room. Sorry for the mess. I didn't really know that I was gonna be making a video at this point, uh, but that was just me getting the uh, GoPro ready for the next day. Um, so uh, next up, when should you leave? Um, as I mentioned before, you know, the Autobahn is just their regular roads, right? So um, there's going to be traffic in the mornings during rush hour and the afternoon. So the earlier you get out there, the better. I think I basically got up around 6 a.m., uh, had a good night's sleep, got a nice breakfast there at the hotel, uh, and then headed it out as soon as I could because I just wanted to avoid the traffic. One of the other perfect things about this hotel is its location. Um, you actually head right back past the dealership, uh, hang a left, and you're going to be on the road that connects you right to the Autobahn, the 95, uh, that's gonna be heading south uh, towards the castle. So uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. You're not wasting any of those precious kilometers uh, and you're gonna head down and you're immediately gonna see just these fantastic views as you can see here. Um, I was absolutely ecstatic at this point. Uh, you know, uh, the, the nervousness of driving in a different country kind of melted away as I saw the beauty of the Alps and the sun coming up over it. You know, I played a lot of Gran Turismo as a kid. Uh, this just reminded me of like the most perfect video game level ever uh, with the road being clear, the skies uh, having that nice blue cerulean color to it. And then, uh, you know, just seeing the sun come up uh, really, really uh, made my heart swell. I was just so excited. Um, so next steps. Driving on the Autobahn, what are the rules? Okay, this is something that's actually pretty important. Um, so, you know, we're told that there's no speed limits on the Autobahn. That's not exactly true. There are sections that do have uh, speed limits. Uh, those are going to be the signs here that you can see, which are basically a number, which is the speed limit, that 120, uh, which is in kilometers, by the way, uh, with the red circle around it. So that's actually a hard uh, speed limit. So definitely do not speed uh, over there or um, 
cut off people or have uh, very short distances between cars, like no tailgating. Uh, they're very strict on uh, their fines for those kind of violations. In fact, it's, I believe it's like a percentage of your income. So definitely do not uh, break the rules over there or whatever you, uh, whatever you do. Um, but uh, the next sign, which I think is just the greatest sign in the world, uh, are the ones that basically tell you, all right, there are no speed limits anymore, and it's this one. Uh, basically, that nice white circle with the black slashes through it and no numbers. And even that isn't quite that there's no speed limit. In fact, the speed limit is still kind of technically the 120 kilometers. But what that means is you can start going as fast as you want. But if you, you know, something bad happens, you happen to get into an accident, you're immediately gonna uh, start getting a percentage of liability depending on how much faster than that 120 kilometers that you were going. Another way to say that, uh, what do I mean by that? Essentially, you could go 300 kilometers per hour if you wanted to, you know, say you had a Bugatti Veyron or something you wanted to take off. But, you know, something happens, you get in an accident, you're going to take a huge liability. Even if it wasn't your fault, like say somebody just pulled out in front of you, just because you were going at such a high rate of speed, you're going to get uh, a good percentage of that uh, liability in an accident. So you just want to be careful when you are going fast. That being said, I've never been anywhere with better drivers. Uh, it was really a, a pleasure seeing everyone obeying the rules. Uh, and in fact, one of the best things over there that I wish we had in the US was that in the left-hand lane, it is just for passing. So you are not supposed to just crawl in that left-hand lane and block everybody. You're supposed to just, if you're gonna be passing, you're gonna, you know, first of all, just be very careful because you never know that, you know, as fast as you're going, there could be a car coming twice the rate of speed that you are, you know, just at speeds we just don't see here in the US. So you just really, really want to be careful when you're when you're getting over in that left hand lane um, because you could cut off somebody or, you know, have an accident there. So just be really careful on there. Uh, but for the most part, everyone obeys that rule really well. I felt super comfortable even though, you know, there was a bit of traffic around when I was doing some of my speed runs, uh, as you'll see a little bit later on in the video. Uh, but I felt super comfortable that nobody was just going to cut out in front of me or do something crazy. You know, nobody's on their cell phones or anything like that where you see here in the U.S. So um, it was just a highly enjoyable experience. So if you enjoy being around other great drivers, uh, it's a great place to be. Um, so, uh, on my way to the castle, I actually did get lost, uh, you know, once I got off the Audubon, because it doesn't go that whole way to the castle, uh, it is actually a really cool route down that way, because you actually get close to uh, Austria and Liechtenstein, uh, you know, so you do want to be careful that you don't get too lost, uh, because you could be crossing an international border. Uh, but I do advise uh, uh, to get a little lost, and, and what do I mean by that? Um, as you can see in this section of video, uh, once, once you get off the Audubon itself, it's a pretty rural area and you're going through some pretty small villages. Um, but I did happen to miss a turn, and so I started driving, you know, uh, just off, and off the beaten path through this small village. But as you can see, it was incredibly beautiful. Um, Essentially, even though it was a small uh, town, the roads were still really fantastic. So, you know, I was able to just drive through and, you know, going back to my Gran Turismo days, uh, it felt like those really nice rally levels, uh, if you've ever played the game. Um, you know, so obviously you don't have the high-end speed like on the Autobahn itself, but totally if you like to see how the car handles and uh, really have some nice scenery, even in the wintertime, you can see the roads were very clear. Uh, one thing that you would be careful of is it is only one lane. Um, and so if you do, if you were to happen to, you know, cross paths with somebody else, you would have to do one of these pull-offs here that you can see. Um, and so, you know, maybe it's behind you, so you'd have to reverse, uh, you know, so just, just be careful. Um, but I luckily didn't run into anybody and was able to drive through this whole section and it was really, really fun. So. So last part, uh, making it down to Neuschwanstein Castle. Um, 
here it is in all its glory. You can see it up there on the mountain, uh, obviously way bigger than the castle at, at Disney, um, much more impressive. Um, you can see the town is just this iconic little small village, um, you know, so I, I started to actually drive up to the castle itself uh, and the roads had been very clear in terms of ice and everything up until that point. Uh, it actually started to get a bit icy, so I wound up not actually going all the way to the castle, but as it turns out, it was probably okay because of COVID restrictions. Um, they probably wouldn't have let us in anyway, um, but it was really cool just for the drive to head down there. Um, one other section here, uh, there is a beautiful little church, uh, and I took this photo there. Uh, so if you wind up being able to use this video and actually make it over to Germany, uh, I would love to see your photos at this exact same spot. That would really warm my heart. Uh, that would mean that I actually, you know, helped you accomplish your, uh, this goal as well. So that would be really awesome. So uh, if you can, just go ahead and share those photos down in the comments. That would be fantastic. Um, you know, and also if you have any questions at all, I'd love to help you uh, answer them. Um, you know, I went into as much detail as I could, but, you know, obviously there's always little uh, bits and pieces, you know, about, uh, you know, various things. So whatever I can do to help, I, I would love to do it. Um, it was just an absolutely incredible experience. Um, more it exceeded my expectations of when I was a kid. Um, you know, the only other better place to drive uh, in the world probably is on an actual racetrack. Uh, I was actually fortunate uh, enough to do that uh, at the Homestead Motor Speedway. Uh, I'll, I'll link to that video below as well. Um, but other than that, you know, you really can't beat the scenery uh, with the mountains uh, and the history. Uh, so definitely, if you can, uh, get over there, uh, get yourself a supercar and, and, and just go exploring. Uh, it was really one of the uh, special moments of my life. So I hope uh, you all get the chance to do that as well. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments or questions below uh, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. All right. Thank you so much.